Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time, Cambridge Lower Secondary Progression Test, Science for Stage 9, Paper 1, 2023, and let's just start. Question 1. Look at the diagram of the human excretory or renal system. A. Complete the labels on the diagram. One has been done for you. This one, the bladder, has already been labeled, so we need to label the other three. This one over here is the kidneys. These two pipes are the ureters, and this over here is the urethra. B. What's the function of the human excretory or renal system? It's simply to remove toxic waste products like urea from the blood. Urea is a substance which mixes with water, and when that happens, it forms urine, which of course we just excrete from the blood. And that's what it actually does for the human excretory system. Question 2. The table shows information about elements. A. 1. Which atom loses 3 electrons to form an ion? Circle the correct answer. The answer is aluminium because the electronic structure is 2, 8, 3. So in the first shell, there's 2 electrons. The second shell, there's 8 electrons. And the third shell, there's 3 electrons. To form an ion, it has to lose these 3 electrons and it'll have an octet structure. So let's say first shell, second shell, third shell, the nucleus is in here. There's one, two here, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. The third shell normally has one, two, three for aluminium. But if you can cancel these out, then this will have an octet structure, or in other words, it'll have no valencies. That means you cannot add or remove electrons from it, it'll have a stable structure. That's why it's aluminium. Part two, which atom forms a negative ion? The answer is chlorine. Explain your answer. Well, the electronic structure of chlorine is 287. It needs one more electron to become 288, which is an octet structure or a stable structure. So chlorine gains an electron to form an ion. That's what I've been saying. Now, since there are more electrons than protons in the chlorine ion, because the 18 electrons and 17 protons, right? So it has more electrons. That's why the chlorine ion is Cl- and it's a negative ion. Part 3. Two elements in the table are in group 1. Write down the atomic symbols of these two elements. Use the periodic table on page 18 to help you. But this periodic table is simply the periodic table at the end of the paper, which I shall show you right now. All right, it's right here. So this periodic table here, the group 1 is for the first column of the periodic table. In this, in the first 20 elements, because that's the amount you need to memorize for stage 9 level. Stage 9 you need to remember from hydrogen till calcium. That's why I'm doing first 3 elements because it's before calcium. So the first 3 elements of group 1 are lithium, sodium, potassium, which is L, I, N, A, and K. Now if we go back to our question, here we can see that in these six atoms, L, I, and K, which is lithium and potassium, are those which are in group 1, which we just saw. So lithium and potassium is the answer. Go to part B. Some elements make compounds with ionic bonds. Describe what's meant by the words ionic bond. So ionic bonds are formed between two or more atoms. It doesn't have to be just two. By the transfer of one or more electrons between them. That means that, let's say, say we have magnesium and oxygen. So magnesium has 12 electrons. Oxygen has 8 electrons. If you move 2 electrons from here, this will become 10 electrons, 10 electrons. Both of these will be in the form of 2,8 in structure, which means it is stable because the outer shell has 8 electrons. And that's why magnesium will transfer 2 electrons to oxygen. That's what ionic bond is. And of course, it's due to electrostatic forces between protons and electrons. That's the answer. Question 3. This question is about heat and temperature. A. Describe the difference between heat and temperature. Heat is the total thermal energy of particles in an object. That's the definition. Whereas temperature is the average thermal energy of particles in an object. That's the difference. Heat's the total thermal energy, temperature is the average. That's the answer. B. Rajiv investigates how the temperature of cold water increases in two different metal containers. He puts the same volume of cold water in each container. 
He puts the two containers in the sun to heat up a bit. Part 1. Name the equipment that Jeev uses to measure the temperature of the water. Of course, what else are you going to use other than a thermometer? We don't need to use some big complicated equipment because we just have two containers, right? Two cans. That's all. It's not really that much that we need to get some other huge equipment to do it. Just the thermometer is enough. Part 2. Look at the graph showing how the temperature of the water in each container increases with time. So as the time goes on, temperature will increase, of course, because put in the sun. But the temperature increase is not the same for a black container and the shiny silver one. The black container gains the most thermal energy, of course, compared to the shiny silver container. Explain how you know from the graph. We can see that the curve for the black container is steeper, right, compared to shiny silver. And also, it ends at a higher point than the shiny silver container. What do I mean? At the end over here, both of them end at the same time. It ends at a higher point. So this point is higher than this one, right? The end of the shiny silver one. Of course, it starts at the same temperature. Otherwise, this would not be a valid point. Because it starts at the same temperature and the black container is ended at a higher point, that means the temperature increases more for black container. Three. Explain why the black container gains more thermal energy by radiation. This is kind of like a continuation of the previous part because this one was showing how it gains most thermal energy and the next one is showing why it gains more thermal energy. Well, dull black colors are the best at absorbing thermal energy by radiation. That's why the black container gains more thermal energy. That's the answer. Part C. Explain how the thermal energy travels through the metal containers. Complete the sentences. Thermal energy transfers through the metal containers by process of conduction because of course it's metal so it conducts it through the metal after the radiation, right? So when the sun's rays, they come to radiation and then to the container. I'll just do a cylinder for that. And then once it reaches the surface of the container, it'll get conducted through inside the container. Now the particles in the metal gain thermal energy and vibrate more. Of course, because metals are solid, the particles in it can only vibrate and they cannot move around. That's why vibrate is the answer for that. And as energy passes through the metal, the particles collide with each other. Why does it collide? Even though, yes, they're not moving, still, when the metal is not heated, that means that they are just stationary. They're not having any force put onto them. But when, let's say this is the arrangement of solid particles or metal particles, when there's heat given here, that means these ones start vibrating more, right? And that means it also collides with the ones next to them. And then this one starts vibrating. And then eventually all of them will start getting heated and vibrate more because of that. That's the end. Question 4. There are different theories for the formation of the moon. Take one correct statement about the collision theory for the formation of the moon. If you didn't know, collision theory is actually also called the giant impact hypothesis. Spelled like this. So out of these four points, actually this one's the only one which supports the collision theory. This one actually supports a different theory which was there before the collision theory and it's saying that the moon formed another part of the solar system was captured by Earth's gravity later. But this does not support collision theory. The moon was formed at the same time as the Earth was formed? Well, the collision theory states that after Earth was formed, a planet called Theia collided into Earth. It collided there and then the Earth spattered lots of dust and gas into the space because it just collided with another planet. And that's why this dust and gas came together to form the moon after a certain period of time. But then it does not form at the same time, right? Only after the Earth was formed, the moon was formed. Now the Earth was spinning so fast that some of the material broke off and began to orbit the Earth. Well, this does not support collision theory. This is actually another theory which has been invented by some astronomers about how the moon was formed. But this does not support collision theory itself. The moon formed when Earth hit another planet. 
they'll be collected in orbit around the Earth. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. The other smaller planet is the planet called Theia. And this is actually the correct statement. That's the answer. Question 5. Mia investigates displacement reactions. In her first experiment, she puts some iron sulfate solution into a test tube and then adds a piece of zinc to the iron sulfate solution and then the codes of a displacement reaction takes place. Mia repeats the experiment, but this time uses different metals. A. Look at the table showing Mia's results from the first experiment. Predict if a displacement reaction takes place with other metals, write your predictions in the table. So she always uses iron sulfate, but she changes the metal being reacted with the iron sulfate. So in the reactivity series, how do we order these four metals? At the top will be magnesium. I will write all of these chemical symbols. So the top will be Mg, and then after it will be zinc, Zn, then it'll be iron, Fe, and then is copper, Cu. This is the order of these four metals alone. Of course, there are more metals in between these all of these ones, but then I'm not writing those just for sake of no confusion here, just considering these four. So that means we know that zinc has displayed reaction because zinc has higher reactivity than iron. What about magnesium? Does it have higher reactivity than iron? I'll write down the four metals in order of reactivity again, where this is the highest and this is the lowest. Yes, magnesium is having a higher reactivity than iron, so this is yes. Of course, iron cannot react with iron itself, so when iron is placed inside solution of iron sulfate, it won't react, right? And for copper, it has lower reactivity than iron, right? So that means it won't have a displacement reaction. B. Complete the word equation for the reaction between zinc and iron sulfate solution. Look at the results. So zinc plus iron sulfate, these are the reactants of the chemical reaction. And these two form, well, why is it named as a displacement reaction? Because one metal displaces another metal. So it goes like this. The zinc goes into the place of iron. Iron goes into the place of zinc. Since zinc has a higher reactivity, only because of that, it actually happens. So zinc sulfate plus iron, these two are the products. You can write it as iron here and zinc sulfate over here. This is the chemical symbol, ZnSO4. But this is a word equation, so write zinc sulfate here and write iron here. It does not really matter about which order you write it, same for over here, and that's our answer. C. Mia replaces the iron sulfate solution each time with a new sample. Explain why Mia does not use the same sample of iron sulfate solution each time. The old sample of iron sulfate may have reacted with another metal, which means, for example, after you do the displacement reaction with zinc, that means it will have reacted, right? There was a displacement reaction. So next, if you use that same iron sulfate solution, it won't be iron sulfate anymore, right? It'll form a metal sulfide or a metal sulfate and won't be able to react again, right? Because zinc sulfate will be formed and that's different. It's not iron sulfate, so it won't give proper results, right? When you react magnesium with zinc sulfate, that's not the idea of the experiment. That's why this cannot be said. That's the answer. Question 6. The diagram shows the pathway of water from the roots to a leaf in a flowering plant. So it's absorption of water through the roots, then transport of water up the stem, and then loss of water from the surface of the leaf. A. 1. Name the cells in the root that absorb water from the soil. They are root hair cells, because those ones absorb water and then send it up to the xylem vessels. And speaking of xylem vessels, that's the answer for the next question. Name the tube in the stem that transports water of the flowering plant. As I just said, it's xylem vessels. 3. Name the process that causes the loss of water from the surface of the leaf. Transpiration from the stomata of the leaf. B. Carlos investigates water loss from a plant shoot. Look at the equipment he uses. At the start, Carlos measures the mass of the flask here, its content, and the plant shoot all together. After 24 hours, he measures the mass of the same things once again. The change in mass is the mass of water lost 
from the plan shoot. Here, here's results. 1. Calculate the mass of water lost by the plan shoot. Write your answer in the table. That's just mass at start minus mass after 24 hours. That's 820 minus 811, 9 grams. 2. Oil is waterproof. Suggest why Carlos places a layer of oil on top of the water in the conical flask. Well, of course, he has to make sure that the water in the conical flask does not evaporate. Only transpiration has to occur from the leaves, right? That's what he's trying to experiment for. He does not want to experiment from evaporation. If he did not have oil, that means the water, or at least some of the water, would have evaporated, and it would not be a fair experiment or a reliable experiment. 3. Carlos wants to improve his experiment. He repeats his experiment using a different balance, which is the measuring balance over here. Here are his results. Mass at the start in grams is 820.3. Mass after 24 hours in grams is 811.4. And mass of the water lost in grams is 8.9 grams. Carlos thinks these results are better. Explain why Carlos is correct. Well, of course, rounding to one decimal place is better than rounding to a whole number, right? more precise. And that's pretty much what we need to write. That's why I wrote, these results have the results round to one decimal place. These results meaning the ones in this part question, which is more precise than whole number values. Precise is the keyword, and if you don't write precise, it's pretty much that you don't get marks. Because for one mark, you need to remember the keywords. If Even if you write everything correctly, but you don't write the keyword, even if you write something synonymous or equal meaning to the keyword, but you don't write scientific vocabulary, then you get a big zero. So you have to be careful with your keywords quite a bit in the science paper. Anyway, moving on to question 7. The straight line from the name of the component to its correct symbol and function one has been done for you. Symbol is V, name is voltmeter, function to measure voltage across a component. Now this, this is a closed switch. And the function is to turn the circuit on or off, obviously. If it's open, it's off. If it's closed like it is now, it's on. Now, for this symbol, it's a variable resistor because the resistor with an arrow to it saying it can be changed the value of the resistance. And that's simply to change the current in the circuit because when we change the resistance, the current will also change. If we increase the resistance, the current will decrease. If we decrease the resistance, the current will increase. Now, for this one, this is a cell, which is the source of energy in the circuit. That's the answer for this question here. Let's go to question 8. Question 8. Offspring inherit characteristics from their parents when a sperm and egg fuse together. A. Name the process that happens when a sperm and egg fuse together. This is just fertilization. B. The sperm and the egg that fuse together determine the sex of the offspring. Look at the diagram showing the chromosomes in the sperm and the egg which describe the sex or gender of the offspring. Explain why there is a 50% chance of the offspring being male. Use the diagram to help you. First of all, we'll write a fact. There are approximately equal number of sperm cells with X and Y chromosomes. This is also shown in the diagram. Sperm X and sperm Y, each of them has one. So, one each means 50%, right? Or 50% for getting a Y chromosome, that means male. So, therefore, there's an equal chance of fertilized zygote being male, XY, or female, XX. So, there's 50% chance of it being male. That's the answer. See, the offspring produced looks similar but not identical to the parents. Explain why the offspring produced will not look identical to the parents. Well, of course, the offspring is going to have slightly different genes than their parents because the two sets of genes, one from the father and one from the mother, they combine together to form the offspring's genes like this. Let's say father's genes, mother's genes. They combine and we get the offspring's genes. So some genes will be the same as mother's, some genes will be the same as the father's, but it will be a completely new combination. That's the difference. That's the answer. Question 9. 65 million years ago, an asteroid collided with Earth, creating a large crater. A. Describe two other effects of this asteroid colliding with the Earth. First of all, of course, a huge shock wave of thermal energy was produced, or radiation of thermal energy. And then the second one is mass extinction of 75% of Earth's species, which were there at the time. 
65 million years ago. B. Oliver and Pierre investigate the effect of size of asteroids on the diameter of craters formed. So the experiment is like this. Oliver and Pierre measure the diameter of a ball, drop the ball into 5 cm depth of flour from height of 1 meter, measure the diameter of the crater formed, repeat the experiment 4 more times. Oliver and Pierre test 4 different sizes of ball. Is given in this page. Here are the results. So the diameter of the ball is 8, 10, 40, and 50 in millimeters. The diameter of the crater is shown over here for 5 tries for each. And the mean diameter is given here for each ball. Oliver and Pierre are discussing their results. They think it is reliable. Why are there two reasons why they are correct? First of all, we can see that when the diameter of the ball increases, the mean diameter of the crater also increases. So they follow a similar trend. That's the first point. And the second one is, we can see that they repeat it five times, not like one or two times, right? They repeat it many times, so they can completely remove or eliminate any anomalous results or any anomalies. These ones are long readings. So for example, in the stair of 11, if they're taking something like 18, that would obviously be an anomalous result since it's completely far away from all the other results. That's why we can say it could be anomalous. That's the answer. Question 10. Magnesium reacts with dilute sulfuric acid to make magnesium sulfate solution and hydrogen gas. A. Complete the sentences about the weight of this reaction. The rate of this reaction is increased by increasing the concentration or the dash of the dilute sulfuric acid. The answer is temperature, because if we increase the temperature, the particles will have more energy or thermal energy. And that means that it will increase the movement rate of the particles, so they'll have more kinetic energy as well. And that means they will collide more often and faster, which means the rate of reaction is higher. One other way of increasing the rate of the reaction is to increase the surface area of the magnesium. That's the answer, surface area, because when we increase the surface area, instead of having like a cube of magnesium, we can have a ribbon of magnesium. In a ribbon of magnesium and a cube of magnesium of the same mass as the ribbon, which one has more particles of magnesium on the surface? Obviously the ribbon, right? The cube will not have as many. That's why we can say that the surface area also matters for the same mass. Changing the mass does not have to be the only way. Surface area is a more precise way to say that same concept. B. Describe how solid magnesium sulfate is made from magnesium sulfate solution. We cannot simply write crystallization, right? Because this is a describe question. When we describe, we have to show exactly how the process is occurring. So we can say like this, just describing crystallization, the water present in magnesium sulfate solutions evaporated and then the remaining solute is left to settle and crystallize. That's the answer. Question 11, Angelique makes an electrical circuit. A, the reading on the ammeter is 0 0.025 amps. The voltage across lamp K is three volts. Calculate the resistance of lamp K. So we, there's a formula called Ohm's law, which is stating that voltage is equal to current into resistance. V is equal to I, which is current into R, which is resistance. V, by the way, is voltage. So that means resistance, which we need to find, is equal to voltage by current. Substitute 3.0 by 0 0.025. If we do it properly, it's 120 ohms. This symbol is the symbol of ohms which is the unit of resistance. B. Anselik makes another circuit with two lamps. Look at the diagram of the circuit over here. Describe what happens to the current as it flows through the circuit. By the way, this X and Y I have done. You will see Y in the answer. But then it's not given in the question, these two labels of the points. So the current splits into two parts at point X. That's why I labeled it so that we can differentiate between the two points there. So the current travels in this way, it goes to X, and over here it splits into two different branches. That's why I said to go through both branches. After passing through the lamps, we can see it passes through the lamp here and the lamp down there, comes back up, 
at point y it joins back together that's actually what we need to write because other than that it just flows normally right there's no branches there's no special things which are go going to the current in those parts only at these two points something is happening to the current that's the answer question 12 this is the question about nebulae a complete the sentences nebulae are clouds of gas and dust this is the only correct answer you can write dust and gas you can just interchange the answers obviously but other than that this has to be these two words here new stars are formed in some nebulae called stellar nurseries b stars can be classified according to their properties look at the table of the properties of some star types we can see this table over here. Look at the key used to identify a star type. It's actually on the next page. Identify the star types of the five stars Antares, Arcturus, Capella, Lactera, and Sirius. Write your answers in the correct star type in the key, which is all these letters given here. Lactera has been done for you. So over here, we have this, the dichotomous key. The star color is blue or blue to white go to two so that means if it's blue or blue to white that means go to two now two is over here mean mass is 60 times greater than the mass of the sun that's lecteva and star type is o because when we go back here star type o the color is blue it asks for blue or blue to white so that's correct and then the relative mean mass according to sun equals one the mass is 60 so 60 times the mass of the sun and that's correct right 60 times greater so like terra oh now mean mass is 3.2 times greater than the mass of the sun for the same star color blue or blue to white we can go back here the relative mean mass should be 3.2 which is over here the star type is a by the way take note that the color should be blue or blue to white over here, it's blue, 3.2. We have star type A, which I've written over here for Sirius. Now, going back to 1, star color is not blue or blue to white. We have to go to 3 now. Mean mass is greater than the mass of the sun for not blue or blue to white. That's Capella. So, if we go back, so we can cancel out the first four. We have only these three left because those are not blue or blue to white. So the mean mass is greater than the mass of the sun. That means it should be greater than 1, right? 1.1 g. This is also not blue to white. That's why it's even counted as the answer. So capella is g, which I've written here. Mean mass is less than the mass of the sun. We have to go to 4. Now that means we have only 2 left, k and m. Both of them less than the mass of the sun. Now we can go here. Mean radius is about half that of the sun, that's Antares, which will be star type M, because when we go back, out of these two, the mean radius should be about half that of the sun. 0 0.9 is not half of 1, right? But 0 0.2 is approximately half of 1. Actually, half of 1 will be 0 0.5, but 0 0.4 is closer to that than 0 0.9. So, Antares is M. And mean luminosity is about half of that of the sun. That's Arcturus, which is K, because when we go back here, the relative mean luminosity when sun is equal to 1 for star type K is 0 0.4. Half of the sun is 0 0.5, right? And 0 0.4 is closer to 0 0.5 than 0 0.04 down there. That's why Arcturus has 0 0.4 star type K, which I've written over here. And with that, I come to the end of the paper. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, Share this video with your friends and family and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.